Good morning. It is a wonderful, wonderful morning. Great to see you here. Good to be here. One of my favorite cowboy jokes fits this time of the year, so I've got to dust it off and bring it out. This is calving season. It's wonderful to see the new life, see these baby calves wandering around. And you know why the bow-legged cowboy got fired. He couldn't keep his calves together. Still works. I'll bring it back next year. Wait for it. It is indeed so good to see you. And this morning we're going to jump into a passage and talk about the joy of contentment. I'll get back to that subject in just a little bit. But we're going to we're going to pull up a passage of scripture that's in in the book of Philippians. We're we're still studying through that in chapter four. And I want to I want to jump right into it. Let's let's do that. Let's go to that scripture verse. Paul is writing this this subject is going to focus around contentment, but I want to bring another subject in to start with because he's writing this whole passage. Watch this. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but I had no opportunity to show it. What he's talking about later on in the passage, we'll skip some verses, but later on he's talking about this guy named Epaphroditus. By the way, if you have friends named Epaphroditus, you might want to upgrade. Uh, <laughs> just, just an idea. I, but, but he has this guy named Epaphroditus who had brought a gift, an offering from the church in Philippi to Paul in Rome to help sponsor and, and finance uh, the, the missions team that Paul had there even while he was in jail and he's thanking them for this and through this process he's saying to them there was a point which you couldn't get stuff to me communication and all of that was so difficult in that day uh, but but he said you, you've over the years you've just done so greatly in that he's saying I've learned to be with and to be without that's what we want to focus on this morning but he's but, but, the, but, but part of the context of this is he's expressing appreciation. So let me just right here, this is unusual to do this in a kind of a message. You would normally think what I'm about to do, I'd do an announcement, but it fits here. And Pastor Tom and I have talked about the, it fits in this part of this message. So on behalf of our staff, I want to thank you guys for being so amazing as givers. You've observed by now that as Cowboy Church, we almost never ask you for money. Pretty much never. Occasionally we'll ask you to do something for somebody else, some baby bottles or, or a young man that's going on a discipleship missions trip or those kinds of things. We'll let other people, but we almost never ask for money. We just say stuff like, oh, we're getting ready to do this. I mean, remodeling this. We said this and boom, you just gave more money than we needed. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And 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 a little bit ago, we said we're we're updating our sound system, and we got new speakers ordered, and you're going to see that one of these days, and and it's going to get better. We're pretty sure. And we just talked about that, and wow, here it came in. You guys just are so amazing. We got you. You saw a piece of equipment out there. We're getting ready to uh, do some more parking, and some of it, by the way, is going to get paved. Haha. <laughs> For those of us who are hobbling. Um, there, there's better walking and, and it's just it's, some of it's going to be closer and we're just keeping to expand and again we are not going to beg for money or even ask for money you are just so generous and I want to fit in the passage to say with the words of the Apostle Paul thank you, thank you you're amazing, thank you this is, this is so awesome so please, please on behalf of, of, of our staff to you receive that Thanksgiving. It is in that context that we're going to talk about contentment. So let's go to the next verse. I'm not saying this because I'm in need. He said, watch this, I'm not begging. I'm not even trying to tell you, boy, things are tough. Thank you that your offering just got here in time. Keep me from starving to death. No, no, no. So I'm not saying this because I'm in need. Watch this. For I have learned to be content. Oh, oh. Oh, I, I, get, I get focused on this content word. I'll tell you why I have trouble with it here in a minute. And I, and I skip this learned word. Don't skip it. He says, I have learned. 
to be content. That means there's still hope for some of us. <laughs> See, if it's a learning process, he's saying, I have learned, he's gonna, he's gonna help us know how that is. I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Oh boy, I can already tell you right now, I'm gonna teach stuff today that's better than I am. I'm, this is one of those areas where I'm better than I used to be, but not as good as I'm gonna be. Are you with me? I'm a journey and, and, and it's with you because I'm content most of the time. And he says I'm content whatever the circumstances. Now here's a guy who's in jail, in chains, and he says I'm content whatever the circumstances. Oh boy, let's this, 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 this keep reading. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. Let's go to the next one. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I'll just pause right there. I find that I have an easier time being content when I have plenty. <laughs> Not all together then, right? I mean, come on, you just buy that brand new whatever and three weeks later you see the one in red. <laughs> oh, I need that one too. Come on, hello. I mean, let's get serious. I currently have more toys than anybody needs but not as many as I want. <laughs> the other day I walked through a, a, a big boy's toy store and I wanted two of them really badly. I have zero need for them. Are, are you with me? My wife would reinforce that zero need for them. Seriously? We, we, this is sort of the acquisitiveness. Even in plenty we have trouble with being content, but I'll say it again. I find it more, I find it easier to be content with plenty than to be content with want, not enough. Do we struggle with that? And, 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 and so, uh, uh, for instance, uh, you know, I'm struggling, I've got, I've got a foot damaged right now, and I find it okay to be reasonably content with how old I am and know I can't do stuff, but now, like, I'm really hurting and really limited, I'm not happy. You, you, seriously, I can deal with being 70 something. Sort of normal, sort of works on days that I feel good. He's saying, I've learned the secret to be content in every circumstance, whether well fed or hungry. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know hunger like the, what he's talking about, like hunger without any food around at all. But I'm pretty content when I'm really full. I find that easier than when I'm hungry. You with me? He's learned a secret. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm just saying to you that we, we, gotta, we gotta figure, we gotta see what he's learned, right? And, and let's acknowledge the fact that contentment, this, this, and then watch this. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Let's, let me watch this verse a little bit. This is a verse that's translated a little differently here. Many of us have memorized it. It's on people's themes. It's, mostly we memorize it this way. I can do all things through Christ who, th who strengthens me. And that's a great verse of scripture. But oftentimes we extrapolate it and it is a standalone scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This translation helps us to understand I can do all of this. It's tied to this. I've learned to be content in any circumstance. I've learned to be content with plenty or in want. And I can do that through Christ who strengthens me. I'll get back to this in a minute, but let me just point this out to you. If you just take this as a standalone passage of scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you can get in trouble because I think Christ really strengthens me, but I still can't dunk. I've, I've been trying this for about 50 some years and I still can't dunk through Christ who strengthens me. Huh. 
I have uh, all that I need, but I'm not a billionaire through Christ who strengthens me. I'm just, I'm just saying a couple of way out there things, right? So, so I th some people have misapplied this passage of scripture is what I'm saying to say that it's a sort of a catch-all phrase that I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. No, you can't. No, you can't. God wired you with certain abilities and also with certain limits. He wired me with a limit to not dunk. I just, I, I, as it turns out, I just don't jump that well. Uh, and and, and are, are, you, you see what I'm saying? But he's saying this passage specifically applies to learning to be content. I can do all this. Now, please understand, Christ can help you do a lot of things. And through Christ who strengthens, you can do amazing things and even things that more than you think. But specifically, it's related to this passage of Scripture. Let's go on. And we've, we've skipped some verses now where he's talked to them about their giving. And watch this. And my God will meet all your needs, not all your wants for toys. My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Oh, wow. He's saying, my God will meet all of your needs. And part of this now, he's attaching it to the splendor of God and the long term of God according to the riches in Christ Jesus. Oh, wow, are you covered. You got that? See, part of this is we're, we are narrow-minded. I've been crippled up for about three days now. Seems like a really long time to me. I'm guessing I'll be over it in about another three days. I'm guessing. I don't know. I hope. Maybe sooner, I hope. And God says, but when, for eternity, I'm going to give you a brand new body and you never have problems with joints again. Huh. So God says, I've got, I want to give you all your needs according to my riches and glory. Deal with six days. It's not even a wink. Now, some of you have had more than six days on huh, Gwen, but, but, but I'm just saying, God is still saying, I got you. I'll meet all your needs. See, we are so temporary, temporal, right now focused, which is part of our discontent. Hello? And, and he's saying, I'm learning the secret. So we're, we're going we're gonna to dive into that some more. Let's go to the next slide. This, let me just hold pause right there. Contentment I've always had a problem with because contentment sounds to me, has sounded to me like complacency. And I hate complacency. I've been annoyed by complacency ever since I was a kid and I'm still not over it. I'm annoyed by complacency. This is not the heart of the message, but it sets it up. And so listen, I'm, when people use phrases like, oh, that's good enough, or it's the best we can do. I often think, no, that's not good enough. And no, that's not the best you can do. That's just the best you want to do. You're just too lazy to do better. Just, just don't turn me off here in a minute. That's, that's what I'm thinking. That's not always true, but it's often true, actually. And I've been so annoyed by complacency and so on that I, I didn't know that I, I didn't think I wanted to be content because I've confused that and conflated that with complacency. You remember earlier in the book of Philippians, we, we read about the idea of meekness being conflated with weakness. And we learned, I believe that was the day that Caleb was teaching, we learned that no, meekness is actually strength under control. It's not weakness. Well, as it turns out, contentment and complacency aren't identical either. It's different. And so my worry about contentment was just misplaced because I didn't define it correctly. So here's a couple of definitions that I've heard. This comes from a Greek scholar named Thayer, and he's talking about this biblical phrase of contentment means it is independent of external circumstances. Let's go to the next one by Brown, which I think helps complete this much better. It's able to be supplied by internal resources. 
Think about that just a minute. Contentment is saying, on the one hand, when I just read that top one, independent of external circumstances, I'm thinking, yeah, whatever. What world do you live in, dude? You may be a Greek scholar, but come on. I live in a world where I'm impacted by external circumstances. Hello? But then I read this other, and it makes more sense to me. Ah, I'm able to be supplied by internal resources. And the Apostle Paul is saying, whether I'm in want or in in, in abundance, I'm able to be supplied by internal resources. I'm not dependent on external circumstances. So when you take that definition of contentment, okay then, now we're not talking complacency. We're talking contentment. Let's go to the next slide. And he talks about being content in my circumstances. There's two things. Let's, let's read. Aware of the presence of God. I'm content in my circumstances because you remember he says, I can do all things through Christ who's giving me the strength. I'm aware of the presence of God. Next one is I'm alert to the purpose of God. In my circumstance, I'm aware that God is here with me. Now, I got to tell you, sometimes it, I have a struggle figuring out what in the world is God up to with this circumstance. Anybody else? Hey, really? Really, God? There had to be a better way. <laughs> There's sometimes when stuff happens to me and I think, and really, God, whatever it is you're trying to teach me, I really want to learn it because I don't want to take this class again. <laughs> this hurts. And, 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 and yet, if we're aware that God is with us, walking with us, and God has a plan, God has a purpose, he's got a big picture, and even when we do things to get outside of his plan or purpose, he has the ability to weave that back in so that once again, we're walking in his purpose. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know about you, but you look back on your life, there are times when you've made some mistakes. You've, you've made some bad choices. Anybody? I can tell several of you just by looking. <laughs> you've made some bad choices and you think, how, these are bad consequences. Choices have consequences. And, it, and yet, yet, when you look at it years later, you see how God wove that back in to the fabric of your life to do good. I didn't make that choice good. Understand that? That doesn't mean tell other people, yeah, you should mess up like I did. No, 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 no. What that means is God has the ability to take even bad choices and fit them into his big plan for you in your life. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. And that is not a, so to be confident in my circumstances. Now let's go to that one. It's the scripture verse. I'm confident because of the power of God. I'm confident because I can do all this for God who gives me strength. I'm confident that I can have contentment because God is with me. I'm confident that he is going to allow me even in the midst of want and need I'm confident because he is with me. So my contentment doesn't come from my circumstances. I don't know about you, but I need to be reminded of that. Because I tend to want to gauge my contentment on how happy I am with the way things are going and what's happening right now. It just makes sense. Anybody? And God is saying, no, no, no. Change that to the fact I'm giving you strength right now to be content in this bad circumstance. I gotta be honest with you, I don't like that. I want good circumstances, okay? I prefer good circumstances and the power of God. <laughs> and God says, yeah, yeah, that can happen. That's, the, that's ice cream. But I'm giving you some bad circumstances and you can see my power at work even in those circumstances. I give you that as well. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. God strengthens us to be able to be content. Let's go to the next verse. And that is through the, not only through that, the, the, but, but, but also the, through the provision of God. We had the power of God, God who gives me strength. This is the provision of God, this abundant. And my God will meet your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. 
If you have something today, that, an unmet need, ask God for that. Make sure you separate needs and wants. In fact, I would start with that question. God, do I need this or do I just want it so much that I think I need it? But, but, but there are times when we have needs. I get that. God, please meet my needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Meet my needs according to your riches, God. Meet my needs. Now, God, I would like to have my wants, <laughs> but I'm going to trust you to meet my needs. Understand God is a God of forever. And so he may not meet your needs in the next 15 minutes because he thinks in terms of forever. Got it? So, so be patient with this, but I'm still saying to you, go in the power and the provision of God that he can meet my needs. I've learned, he said, the secret of being content. I've learned to be content, he says, whether I have plenty or whether I don't have enough. And I think, wow, I want to learn that. Wow, I need to get better at that. I'm better than I used to be by the grace of God, but not as good as I'm going to be by the grace of God. Can you say that with me? Are you, are you with me on that? I, I, want to be, I want to be better to say I need to have a longer-term view. I need to be aware of the presence and power of God. I need to be tapping into the riches that he has rather than the want that I have. And then he says, I can be content in any circumstance. See, I had this question about Friday because I've, I've been preaching this message to myself ever since Monday. And I came up with this injury and severe pain and thinking, seriously? Did you think I needed this? You didn't think I got this passage to start with, really? I needed this just so I would learn like I'm supposed to be content now. Really? So I don't know what your week's going to look like. I, <laughs> not my fault. I hope it's not like this. I really do. <laughs> I'm, I'm suggesting since I've already un, unburdened this on you, I'll get better in a hurry now. <laughs> kind of what I'm thinking. What I'm saying is in whatever circumstance, God has said, I got you. I'm there with you. I'll meet your needs according to my riches. Now we're going to do something a little different to wrap up today. Uh, Dallas is going to come back up and sing a song, and I'll guarantee it's going to be more fun than what I've just done. <laughs> but I want to pray for you first while she's getting ready. Let, let's, let's pray. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. We, we read this passage of Scripture, God, and we have to say, wow, I don't know if I can get there from here. I don't know if I can learn to be content in any and every circumstance. I don't know if I've figured out the secret to being really content. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do this. And I can trust you to meet my needs according to your riches and your grace and glory. I can. So God, help me. Help me to learn whatever the circumstance to have that contentment that comes from the inner resource that is you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this song is really, really fun, and it's the exact <laughs> Bible verse that Pastor Isaac preached on this morning, and I, I'm just going to admit it, it's a kid's song, but I learned this song, and now I have this verse memorized because it is just an earworm. It just, you hear it a couple times, and it's like, go away, but it, it, if you got something going through your mind, it might as well be a Bible, Bible verse, so, and since it is a kid's song... 
kids, you're going to learn this faster than the adults. So help them out. They're going to need you. Here we go. I know what it is. situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can do all this Kids probably already have it. Adults, you're just going to have to struggle. Let's try it again. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content. situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty. 